everyone, it's Blake again with Northwinds Wilderness School. Welcome back to another installment of our little social experiment that we're doing here. The weather's been really weird here for the last several weeks. You know, we had almost 50 degrees in January, and then it went down to like 35, 40 below zero for a long stretch of days. And then as soon as it warmed back up to what I would call a normal temperature, right now I think it's 20 degrees out, it started snowing and it's been snowing for like a week. As you can see, we've gotten like two feet of snow in the last week, which having two feet of snow here isn't unusual, but getting it all in one week is. It's been making driving interesting. They've canceled the school in our town here five or six times for the weather. It's just been weird and it's been kind of frustrating to me, which has led me to think about the idea of letting go of control. Um, there are a lot of things in our life that we can't control that we get really strong emotional reactions to. Um, the weather being one of them. People get mad and they, err, I hate the winter or whatever. And it's like, you know, we, we live in the north. It's going to be cold. It's going to snow. We need to just learn how to live with it, how to let it happen. And I, I think that there's a couple of really simple ideas that we can look into to help give up control. When we say letting go, we're not talking about giving up. I'm not saying that if you're trying to do something that's really hard, you should just let it go. Letting go means learning the difference between what you can change or affect and what you can't, and not letting your emotions take control when dealing with things that you cannot change. If you're working towards a goal or you're working on a project and things get difficult, you should persevere. You should keep trying. You should keep working on that. We've talked about this before where when you do complete a difficult task, it is a practice in mindfulness, in perseverance, and it helps build your confidence. But when you're dealing with some, something like another person's actions or the weather, you have no control over that. You cannot control that. So that is when we need to learn to let go. The first step that I'm going to suggest that you take in your journey towards letting go of control is learning how to accept yourself for who you truly are and learning to accept others for who they truly are. We all have these preconceived notions of who we think we are and what we think of other people. And I, I think quite often those notions are wrong. You've probably heard people say that there's uh, three parts of a person. There's who you think you are, there's who other people think you are, and then there's who you really are. I think that that idea has some really solid depth to it. And I think that if we can work on applying that idea to our own lives, that it'll create a sense of calm, it'll create a sense of balance that we can then start working from. And I think that when we put our preconceived notions on other people, or we think that we know who someone is or what they're about, we start to create tension where there doesn't need to be tension. Um, you know, if you have a partner, whether it be a business partner or a relationship or a friend, and you think that they are reliable, and then one day you call them for help and they don't show up, you're, that idea of you is gonna, that your idea of them is gonna change and it's gonna cause conflict. Or if you have a friend who has let you borrow their car five times and then you ask them to borrow it a sixth and they say no, it's gonna create tension. So if we can let go of the idea that we know what other people are doing or what they're thinking, it's gonna help build a foundation for our own sense of peace. So, along the same lines of not judging people or not assuming that we know who people are, is this idea of expectation. When you expect things from people, it causes tension, it causes conflict. Um, for instance, let's say you're on your way home from work and you expect your significant other to have dinner ready when you get home and then you get home and it's not ready. 
immediately you're going to start judging, you're going to start blaming, you're going to say, you know, I thought you'd have dinner ready, I don't know what's going on, I'm hungry, I'm tired, I was at work all day, etc., etc. But you have no idea what their day was like, you don't know what their situation is, you don't know why they don't have dinner ready, but your preconceived expectation has created this tension within you. It's created this situation in which you don't have control over a situation that you thought you understood and now you're gonna be upset, you're gonna be angry, you're gonna be sad, you're gonna feel stress. And those are all things that are gonna turn your mindfulness and your sense of solidity on their heads. If we can bring ourselves to a place where we don't expect anything from people and we just accept whatever happens as normal and what was supposed to happen, then we're setting ourselves up for success. We're setting ourselves up to start from a place of openness, of acceptance. And we are not using our preconceived notions of people as a means of stress. One of the things that happens with the way human brains work is that we tend to make up stories. Rather than looking at what's happening around us and using that information to determine fact, we start making up stories. Um, you know, I think in a relationship of two significant others, husband, wife, husband, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, whatever you're whatever your situation is with your significant other, I think this is a great example of what I'm talking about. Um, you'll have a date set up with your significant other and then they call and cancel. And quite often our first thoughts are gonna be, is that person cheating on me? Does that person not love me anymore? What's going on? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we go way overboard in our attempt to understand and analyze the situation without actually being open to the reality. You know, the reality is your significant other got stuck at work. By the time they get done working, they're going to be too tired to want to go out. So they're calling to let you know that they're not going to want to go out tonight. But your brain went from zero to 60 without doing the 10, the 20, the 30, the 40, and the 50. We need to try to keep in mind that the stories that our minds tell us are usually not true, usually not correct. It's not that we're sometimes wrong, it's that we're usually wrong. We can't read other people's minds and we cannot control other people. When you examine the stories that your brain is telling you and you start asking yourself, is that real, is that feasible, you're gonna to start to notice that you're creating a lot of your own drama or your own stress unnecessarily. So right now, I'm gonna tell you something that not very many people in your life are gonna tell you. You need to be a little bit selfish. It is worth the impact that it will have to take some time and work on yourself. You know. Maybe you're the type of person that likes to go out and volunteer, help your neighbor, you know, help your friends, do whatever. Or maybe you just like to keep people happy. You like to go and do social situations. You like to go spend time with your parents. If you are not taking time to work on yourself, you're going to cause yourself problems. You are worth the effort that it takes to spend some time improving your own headspace. Taking some of the principles we've talked about and some of the principles that we're going to talk about and applying them to yourself feels selfish. And even if it is, it's, it's the kind of selfish that's worth it. It's going to improve your life and your headspace and your sense of peace, solidity, and clarity enough that it will make your impact on the world more positive and more powerful. So. It's okay to be a little bit selfish every now and again. But with that, I'm also gonna say be gentle on yourself. While you're doing this kind of work, don't be too hard on yourself. I've been doing this type of work in my own head
for years and I still struggle with it. I still struggle to avoid judgment. I still struggle to avoid expectation. I still struggle to find peace. So when you're doing your own work, be gentle on yourself. Push forward, do the work, but don't be too hard on yourself. This kind of work is hard and it's 180 degrees opposite of what our culture is telling us we should be doing. The last thing I want to talk to you about today is negative emotions. Um, I'm going to kind of riff off of uh, a video that my friend Kenton put out a couple years ago and I hope that doesn't offend him because I've done it before, but anger is not inevitable. You do not have to feel anger. We choose to feel anger. Um, I don't remember who said it, but I recently heard a psychologist say, we can only feel anger for a couple minutes. After that, continuing to be angry is a choice. We're going over these things in our head and we're ruminating on it and we're allowing the anger to continue and to grow, but it's not real. It's a decision that we're making to feel that way. And this doesn't just apply to anger. It applies to sadness, lonely, loneliness, depression, not the clinical kind, even jealousy. All of these emotions are real. They happen, but we don't have to hold on to them. We can just let them go. We don't need to control them. We can just let them go. But it takes practice. When you notice a negative emotion coming in, you know, you're driving, you cut off, you're, oh, I'm gonna kill you. Feel it, recognize that you are feeling it, and let it go. Over time, you'll feel the emotions coming on and you'll be able to let them go before they nest in you. And eventually, you will start to notice that something is bothering you and you'll be able to let go of that negative emotion before it's even starting. Right now, wherever you are on your journey, try this. Something happens, you have a negative emotion, ride the wave of that emotion and notice that it happened and then think about it. Why did that make me angry? Why did that make me jealous? Why did that make me sad? And how could I react in a way that would be more positive and more productive? I don't need to control this situation. I'm not in control of this situation. So letting it go is going to be the best thing for me. Getting to a place where we can have an attitude of, I'm just gonna let the world come at me and I'm gonna react in the best way that I can, is a very solid starting point on the journey to mindfulness. If you got anything out of this video or you've had any experience with practicing letting things go, please leave us a comment. Let us know what your experience has been or what your opinion is. Um, if you got anything out of this video, please find someone to share it with. Um, you sharing these videos with your friends is the best way to help us get the word out of the work we're trying to do here. Um, as always, I really appreciate the time that you took to watch this video and to hang out with us. And uh, I really hope to see you all in the future. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.